you guys are also tackling scalability with OPBNB. There's been multiple layer twos. Sometimes we even say layer threes. I don't know what that means and everything. So what about OPBNB? What is it? Why we decided to look into OPBNB and the scalability as well issue within the BNB chain. We know it's not too expensive to run transaction, let's say versus other L1, you know, but it's still a bottleneck for a lot of people and for the mass adoption. And even the scalability, the throughput is like in terms of, let's say, transaction per second, as people like to mention it, it's not as high as we would expect as well. So with a few innovation that we brought into OPBNB, we are able to reach like transaction cost up to let's say 0.005 US dollar, you know? So it's really cheap and really affordable for user. And in terms of scalability, we hope to reach let's say more than 4,000 TPS as well. So it's really going to boost up the BNB ecosystem. And thanks to OPBNB, we hope that it's really going to bring new, let's say new use cases into blockchain as well. We've seen DeFi, we've seen NFT, but what's next? And to really know what's next, we need we need to have the infrastructure ready for it. So we hope that we are going to be able to provide it to the developers as well. What made you choose Optimism compared to say Arbitrum? And compared to ZK as well, maybe, because this is another tech as well for layer twos, you know? So, I mean, we really decided to go with OP, OP stack mainly because of the strong community support that this stack is having. It's a modularized framework as well. So our team and our community developer were able to specifically customize some module to really like bring even more innovation within this stack and really like leverage it even higher the capability of the this specific stack. So this is one of the main reasons, like it's open source, it's an open ecosystem, it's a modularized framework, so we are able to add on top of it as well. And uh, we are really looking forward to like bring innovation back to OP stack as well. Awesome, you were talking about bringing in more devs. That's every layer one, every project is trying to get devs or users in a way. What are you doing at BNB, at Binance, to bring in more devs? When we say bring more devs, it's not like stealing it from the other chains, you know. It's really bringing new people into Web3, like into this ecosystem. So like Web2 developer or traditional developer, as we call it. So we have this Akatong initiative currently, which is running till end of August or early September. Well, it's an online event, of course, so people can go online, can register. There is multiple tracks, so there is infra, gaming, DeFi. And we really hope that the people are really going to be able to utilize our different SDK, different solutions like OPBNB, Greenfield. And we are going to provide workshops, training, and as well like good prices. So for people who are winning, they're going to really be able to leverage what they're building and scale it up later on as well. So we really try to bring, let's see, workshops, training, and online hackathon to people to like learn about Web3 and develop into OPBNB and BSC network as well. Do you think traditional finance is good for crypto? It does bring lots of liquidity. Are you scared maybe they're gonna change, take ownership of it? How do you see it? Uh, I don't think we should be scared because at core deep level, I mean, blockchain is here to, to really sustain any type of attack if we want. So if an attack will occur, it should be able to sustain it as well. So I think we should really welcome any type of activity that want to go into Web3 as well. So I think we should really like embrace those people as well and welcome them into Web3 or blockchain industry because they can help us to grow as well. So I don't see it as a threat or like as an attack, for example. I really see it just as, as a new use case. So it's a new use case that can be leveraged by maybe more people as well. Maybe it's going to help us to onboard even more people faster. So I'm, I'm looking forward for them to join as well the, this industry. Any last words? Piece of advice for the young people, for the noobs in crypto, any funny story at ECC, anything you'd like to add? I mean, for me, like, there's no, nobody's doing like mistakes, basically. Just try, learn, repeat, try, learn. Just try to not repeat twice the same mistake, of course, but just try to like improve, always like learn, study, like watch different interview. Like we need to watch you guys as well because you are providing good content as well. So I think it's really, we need to educate people but people need to educate themselves as well. So please spend a lot of time to study. Like here for us, we've been here like for a few years, months, we've been studying hours and hours. And it's not something that you can learn within just a few minutes. You really need to deep dive into it. So don't be scared when you jump into it. Just go and learn and ask questions like join events, side events. They're usually free as well. So you can easily register and just have fun. Thank you so much, Arnaud, to all the builders out here, the community members uh, live from Paris. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Cheers.